What is up guys, welcome back to another League of Legends Wild Rift video and today we are continuing this little guide series where I talk about the different roles. We already did one about Graves and the jungling and this time we're gonna be, I'm gonna be giving you some tips on how to play the mid lane properly and especially on how to transition from Arena of Valor and other mobile MOBAs to Wild Rift mid lane because this lane is also very very different um, compared to other mobile MOBAs compared to other mobile MOBAs, uh, mid lane I mean. So um, for example, in other mobile MOBAs you just clear the wave, you go to roam a lot, but here you can see we just cleared the first mid lane wave and the next one already arrived. The minions are much tankier, there's four minions in most other mobile MOBAs, there's only three minions and you can see you really have that 1v1. I keep telling you that it is much more similar to uh, uh, to a solo lane position, to a side lane position where you're fighting um, against the other fighter 1v1 but in the mid lane it is mostly gonna be mages. Now I chose Ari for this little showcase because she is in my opinion um, very similar to mages from other mobile MOBAs like Arena of Valor because you have the assassin, um, the assassination potential but you also have that poking potential and a lot of AOV mid laners like Tulin, like Raz are very similar to that um, where you can poke, you can stay at your distance, you know, but you can also go deep and once again, just like the Graves video, we won't go uh, over her abilities because as I said, you can just check a Wikipedia article, I don't need to uh, take two minutes here to explain all the abilities because it would make the video too long. We will go completely into depth and the first thing right there is already you have to get your warding right. The other mobile MOBAs don't have Fog of War, they don't have wards and you really need to pay attention where the enemy jungler started. I know the enemy jungler started blue buff, so I'm gonna ward on the other side because he's gonna end at the red buff, he's gonna gank from that side, okay? So see, my ward is already paying off, it's already revealing Lee Sin on the minimap. We know where he is, we know he's doing the scuttle crap and I'm already uh, providing a lot of value to my team, my top lane is also very safe right now because they know where Lee Sin is. My bot lane, the Jax, is completely safe in his 1v1. He exactly knows where Lee Sin is. Here we go for a cheeky little engage onto this Zed. We have to flash away because the Lee Sin follows up as well. I thought I could just quickly engage there because he completely ran out of energy there um, while clearing the wave. So I thought I could just try to charm him and try to just blow him up. But Ari right now isn't the strongest mid laner and Zed coincidentally is, in my opinion, the strongest mid laner right now. So we are struggling a little bit, but we're still doing fine. We go back, we get our lost chapter. Uh, we already had that. We get our blasting wand. Uh, keep in mind, especially in mid lane, it's really important when you have to go back, okay? Generally, the first back you wanna design around an item that gives you mana region when you are a mana hungry uh, mid lane mage or you just want to go back for one of these small uh, medium tier items, okay? Whenever you can get the first one, maybe it's already worth. Oftentimes it's really worth to time your back before a cannon minion wave arrives because the enemy will have a really hard time uh, just shoving that cannon minion wave and just clearing it out fast uh, because whenever you see the enemy mid laner your uh, go back, your primary goal uh, should be to shove the wave into the tower so while they're back they lose a lot of minions to the tower okay and here we go for a cheeky little dive man this is a little bit too aggressive especially because i'm playing on 200 ms this is very dangerous but look at this man i get the ignite onto him as well and we are able to escape with that second ability move speed bonus and we see the uh, Z on the minimap i played really clean this game macro wise and also mechanically for some stupid reason again we are on 250 ms this uh, Ari, I don't recommend her at all on 250 events, but I really wanted to showcase her because as I said, I think she is one of those staple mages in League of Legends, in Wild Rift. Um, I thought about doing Orianna, but she's very different from all kinds of other mages and this is more of a similar AOV. Like you could put her in AOV, it would be very similar, you know? Um, it, it would fit the game, you know? Anyway. As I said, we're chilling so far, we're 1-0, we have a pretty nice lead right now. And what I will do with this lead, you can you have two choices, okay? You can decide to just beat up your enemy laner and you can try to mid-diff 
like a huge mid lane difference. You can try to solo kill him, you can try to get huge advantages, huge gold advantages, push him away so he can't get the last hits, and yeah, just try to create a 5v4. What you can also do, and what I chose to do in this game, because I am playing against that Zed. I'm not confident in beating Zed in mid game, as you already saw. He ults us once, I flashed away, and I still almost died. And as I said, for Zed here, we can go for a cheeky little, we can force his flash. And here I still try again to get him, but we are able to actually. Okay, I remember that wrong. We completely mid lane different, okay? It is what it is, the gaming genius. Outplays the Zed after he, of course, used his ult. He doesn't have that for quite some time. It's a 70 second cooldown or something like that early game. So we can easily get this lead now. And now you might think, okay, now you just stay mid because I really didn't roam so much. We dove top lane, but we really didn't have time to roam as much. Now I go back because he's dead, of course. He's walking back to lane. And now we will get the boots and we will get that beautiful. Um, Zonyas to hard counter Z, of course, and now, as I said, we could decide to just stay mid, to just keep pushing, to just keep um, trying to push him out, which by the way, you can do really well as a Z, for example, because you're really good in that 1v1. Ari, however, is a really good roamer, so while we're ahead in gold right now, I explicitly make the decision that my Kai'Sa is incredibly broken on this patch, it's a marksman. Marksmen are the kings of Wild Rift right now. So I'm just gonna keep roaming. Look, we have the uh, Scuttle Crab secured as well. So I have that cheeky movement speed. So I'm trying to find a pick here. I'm trying to find an opening. Um, I see there's nothing to gain. So I go back as soon as the mid lane wave arrives. Of utmost importance, okay, to always keep pushing these mid lane waves, guys. Okay, it's the same in every MOBA. But yeah, just keep that in mind. Never forget that. Enemy gets the Rift Herald. And again, I push the wave, I get the last little last hit on. By the way, the biggest difference, of course, between this MOBA laning and other mobile MOBAs is you have to get the last hit. Don't miss any last hits. It is so much more gold, okay? But I mean, that's obvious that we don't have to mention that really. Now you can see, look at this cheeky gank. I snuck all the way through the vision to go for a lane gank. And it's just a beautiful macro. We don't even play it mechanically well, you know? Here I thought the last tower shot would hit me, so I use my Zonyas. Um, she's able to pick him up as well, and we turn the top lane into a easy win for us, because we get a double kill. Um, they kind of cringe it, they die as well. But no biggie, you know, we can just regank that lane again, because the enemies used a lot of their summoners, and it's honestly just gonna be a free uh, yank. By the way, I'm still not sure about telling you about my builds. We're using Electrocute, you can definitely copy that. Nothing else. I'm not sure about the small keys, uh, like the small runes. Um, the build, I'm going Ludens. I'm going full Assassin. Ludens into Infinity Orb. Infinity Orb is, of course, gonna give us mo much more um, finishing potential, you know? The Assassination is gonna be much more potent with it. So feel free to copy it, and yeah. As I said, man, we tried to predict his movement, but man, guys, honestly, this was also a really bad ping. Sometimes I have a 200 ping, this time it was flat 250 MS. I was just, yeah, it, it's hard, it's hard. But we hit this guy in the end a little bit, I think. No, we miss him, <laughs> but it's fine. We have our ult available. We again go top. Why would I go bot? Bot is a Jax versus a Trinamir. Jax shouldn't lose that because he can literally dodge all attacks, but he's losing it hard. No point to go there. My Kai'Sa, however, is just so strong, you know? Kai'Sa is such a strong champ. If we can get her ahead, if we can support her a little bit, we will win the game. And yeah, that is what I'm, that is the whole game plan. You, you should always build a game plan during champ select, during the loading screen. You look at the enemy champs, you look at your champs, you think about how will both, how will all lanes interact. That's why jungling and mid lane, I think in League of Legends are really difficult roles because you really need to know how everything pans out, you know? For example, Simeo keeps telling me Kai'Sa counters Ezreal, so I knew that lane should win. And did you see that? He just dashes in and he instantly kicks me back, man. I really, I couldn't even flash, man. It's just the ping life is too hard, but it's fine. We um, end up dropping. Definitely a huge disadvantage now for us. This ended up being a very close game, by the way. This should be uh, pretty fun just in general to check out, but yeah, now 
Um, you can see my Kaisa is going a little bit too deep. She gets the Lee Sin, but she will definitely die here under her tower. They just died her. This Trinamir is doing the same thing as I'm doing. He left his bottom lane. He was winning it. He left it, went top to translate his advantage into a team advantage. And that is something not really a top laner has to do. I will make a top lane guide as well. I'll probably try to do it on Fiora. And honestly, it will just be 1v1 all day. And when someone ganks you, 1v2, you outplay them. That's how top lane operates in League of Legends. And sometimes you show up and you really show up for a huge flank, a very calculated one, and then you just win, right? And you just win the whole game if you have an advantage because you catch off the enemies. But in mid lane, it's very different. You really, like, look, if you, if you pause whenever I show the scoreboard, you will see that me and Zed are completely dead even in farm. Even though I have more kills, he has two deaths, we're just juicing him. I probably have more last hits as well. Um, because I abandoned some waves. I gave over some waves um, to the Vi. She cleared some of them. Uh, because I was busy roaming. And it's completely fine. We catch out this little Blitzcrank. I try to kill him here. We'll see if I get him. I'm not able to get him completely. We don't have our... Uh, what's it called? We don't have our Zonyas. We're not even able to get... Uh, Zed, he dies at the end to the red buff from Vi, very well played. But yeah, I missed the charm. This should really be, uh, this should really exemplify how you can still do well. Because we're honestly in pretty good control over the mid lane matchup. I'm winning it pretty hard, even though I'm on 250 MS with one of the most difficult, like, look, we're struggling with these skill shots. One of the most difficult uh, champions to play on high MS, because if you pretty much miss your charm, you will deal zero damage. Uh, that's just the story of uh, Ari, right? And um, this should really show you how you can just do well with macro because we're clearly out macroing the Zed. He is just going back at random times to get whatever to go back to re regen. He is not really roaming well. He didn't get a single good roam off so far. And he wasn't even playing the laning phase that badly. He forced a flash on us. He almost killed me. Um, he forced, I mean, he forced me to go Zonyas instantly, you can see here. We're just getting, we're just completely clowning him right now. I use Zonyas to dodge the proc, but we um, are a little bit caught out. Luckily, the Blitzcrank used his hook way too early, and I was still Zonyas, so we're able to survive. But now we don't have Zonyas. And the thing about um, Zed is that his ultimate has a le lower cooldown than Zonyas. So if I would be playing Zed, for example, in this matchup, I would just be looking for this Ari right now, trying to kill her, okay? Um, as soon as my ultimate would be back up. Now this Blitzcrank is a little bit overextended. We are not able to tag him with the charm. Um, see, I'm, this is what I was talking about. You can stay at range, you know, we're staying at range, we're biding our time, we don't have our ultimate ready. So we're just staying at range, trying to poke. Look, I'm not committing, I'm not walking into the melee range. I'm just trying to hit my abilities. Missing most of them, it is what it is, but we are able to um, get him in the end. We pop our ultimate, and now this Ezreal, I mean, he dodges everything, man, I really can't. Um, but yeah, we'll see if we get him. This was actually really funny. He dashes back in. Now I'm, I'm waiting for my second ability because that's the only thing I can't miss. I flash back in and we just get him with the easy ability that just homing missiles in on him. And we are able to get a very nice um, kill there, very nice double kill, in fact, onto that Lee Sin as well. Now we have our Robodons, uh, that is the third item of choice here, because as I said, you just want to go for as much AP as you can, so you can just one-shot these kids, man. That's what you're all about. Um, yeah, the more squishies on the enemy teams, the better it is to pick Ari. If they have a Blitzcrank, it's... look, look at this, see? This is the issue, man. I can't do anything, man. I don't have Zonyas, 15 seconds left, he had his ult back up, he finds me in the jungle, I didn't use my sweeper so I didn't show any wards, I probably walked through a ward, and he is just able to completely one-shot me, okay? No counterplay pretty much, that is what Zed does, we didn't have ult either to just jump away and juke some of his shuriken, but in Wild Rift honestly, even if you juke some of his shuriken, man, it, <laughs> it is a E auto attack, maybe one shuriken and you're dead. Ignite, no shuriken, two auto attacks, ah, you're done. It's crazy. Um, so yeah, it's funny how I'm always showing like a subpar hero champion 
that is not the strongest in the role for these videos and we're always playing against the strongest, the best in slot champ in the game right now in that specific role. Last time it was Graves against Xin Zhao, this time it is Ari against that Zed. Let me tell you man, Zed is crazy, I'm thinking about buying him because you guys enjoy watching him as well. Um, I'm just really not too keen on that ping, you know. Also, I really like my Zed. I mean, Zed is really cool too. We, we might, we might, okay, we might. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see that. But yeah, we take this blue buff now. Uh, I have my Zonia so I can venture a little bit. I can uh, venture a little bit out myself without being too scared of Zed. But yeah, of course, just like in any other um, game, that, ooh, look at this, man, this was so sad. He just finds me instantly. I walk through with the sweeper and yeah, I just get ulted as well, man. We absorb like two ults there. That was really sad, man. I just got completely clowned. But while that is going on, I didn't even realize. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't even realize. Uh, but take a look at this Jax, man. My team is losing the fight for sure. The Kai'Sa is almost dead. Beautiful as you snipes her away and he instantly backports because take a look at the minimap, man. My guy is ending the game and he will get it. Quick spoiler, he does get it. So um, yeah, beautiful. That was actually a really fun game. We had some really nice outplays. Um, honestly, the best I can do on this ping on Ari, it is what it is. Um, yeah, let me know if you guys enjoyed this. Of course, I'm gonna do more of these where I really try to teach you guys these roles, try to teach you this game um, as much as I can to the best of my ability so far. Of course, as I said, we're not perfect yet either we're not super good either even but we're getting there you know we're practicing and i'll try to share all that knowledge that i'm getting so far and yeah that is um that is pretty much gonna be it for this video let me know what you thought about this let me know if you like this let me know if you want me to go more in depth or if you want me to go a little bit more shallow although shallow is always not my uh, cup of tea because as I said, a lot of other YouTubers are already explaining the basics. I want to really go into that. Um, this video was mainly about how you can give up your own lead a little bit in the mid lane if you know the enemy counters you hard anyway in the late game. Like Ari against Zed, whenever I played that on PC, that matchup, I knew even if I get ahead, he will still one-shot me. I will still have to use my Zonyas. If I have 15,000 gold or if I have 5,000 gold, I will always have to use my Zonyas to counter his... Uh, damage otherwise I'll die so I decided to just go for Akaisa and honestly she did really well in the remaining team fights and in the end maybe we should have simped the Jax he was the carry in the end hope you guys enjoyed if you did leave a like subscribe for more of these and I will see you guys next time peace out boys bye bye